Um, I would like to thank um, Charles Simoni, our head of the Board of Trustees, and of course the director of the IAS for uh, co-financing this lecture series, and the IAS staff, in particular Lee Sandberg, Marsha Tucker, Meredith Lozier, and um, Uta Nitschke, who helped us an awful lot. Tonight, we have three distinguished speakers who will each give 15 minute statements, and then we can open up the floor to questions. Before introducing our speakers, a word of explanation. In my country, Germany, many former National Socialists remained in power long after 1945, evading prosecution and rewarding each other with ample pensions. By the time I became a student in the 1990s, a new generation of judges, historians, and politicians managed to change all this. No school child in Germany today has failed to learn about the Holocaust, and whenever you turn on the television, you will see documentaries on the Nazi period. A few things have happened, however, that have made me anxious. One of my most respected colleagues, John Röhl, is an expert on Emperor William II. He has found many new sources. In 1920, for example, William II argued that Germany would never find peace until, quote, all the Jews had been slaughtered. Among other measures, William II pronounced himself in favor of pogroms, and in 1927, he had a particularly prophetic idea, quote, Jews and mosquitoes are pests which humanity must eliminate one way or another. I think gas would be the best way. So that's in the late 1920s. To me, these quotes, were pretty obvious, uh, but apparently I was mistaken. At a recent conference, one German histor historian explained to me that this was just a form of reactive anti-Semitism, whatever that means. Supposedly understandable, because the overthrow of the monarchy had been spearheaded by Jews and cost William II his throne. This bizarre reinterpretation of German history comes as news to me and no doubt to all of you. I was also surprised when another more famous German historian, Wolfram Pütter, tried to whitewash the guilt of William II's oldest son who had hoped to rule with Hitler and who had bragged that he had won two million voters for the Nazis. The AfD, the party of the far right in Germany, is currently trying to dismiss all this as of no significance. They are supporting these arguments. One of its leading politicians, Alexander Gauland, called the Nazi period just a bit, and that's a quote, just a bit of bird shit in Germany's great long history. True, the period lasted 12 years, but the death toll was no more than bird shit. Is anti-Semitism and a rehabilitation of Hitler's supporters now socially acceptable? And why is a far-right party like the AfD in Germany suddenly so popular in Eastern Germany? Are people attracted to this party because it is a general protest party, or is it their anti-Semitism that appeals? Germany is a healthy democracy there's a stable party system, and that gives some cause for comfort. Our leading historians are standing up against revisionist history. Our courts send culprits to prison for denying the Holocaust. But is this an effective solution to anti-Semitism? Unfortunately, the anonymity of the digital age makes it more and more difficult to get hold of people who spread their lies and conspiracy theories online. It would therefore be wrong for us to be complacent. Something is happening in our society and we do not know whether we will soon face a tidal wave 
or a tsunami. 